Switch pockets here, switch my phone, I'll switch a digi. All right, so deeds and do that. So we are at the shop. So I put the mic on because there are customers in the shop, so I'm gonna be as quiet as possible. So I don't bother the customers in the store. I'm kidding. But uh, we're gonna thrive in this chaos. Just to, God, let me learn how to speak for a second. Let me reel it in a bit. We're gonna work in this chaos because that's what we're used to, just like I said at the beginning of this little episode before the intro so we're gonna kind of skate around here I mean as you can see already like the shop is forever changing so mind the mess ladies and gentlemen they're continuously building more and more and more and more and more let me show you the arachnids real quick before we get started with this episode so this is gonna be an intermediate episode we're gonna do I'm gonna call it intermediate slash advanced episode because we're gonna do some arboreal snakes today. And that's what I wanna do. And then of course, at the end of it, we're going to end the video with feeding one of the mascots here at the shop. And that's gonna be Sue Young. I'll give you a sneak peek, Sue Young. Bye -bye. That's enough. That's for the end. That's for the end. All right, so before we go through, let me let you guys know. Uh, if you don't know already, if you guys haven't watched my other Cold-Blooded Kingdom uh, videos, this is obviously a shop that Josh owns and runs. And uh, we got some surprises coming in the future. I'm not going to let the surprise out yet. It's not my surprise. It's kind of a Josh surprise thing. So I'm going to wait. But there's big things in the store for the future. But we're going to run through. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I want to show you guys some of the things that are available here that you might not be able to see online or um, basically on their Instagram and all that good stuff. Okay, so first stop here, and I'm actually going to be taking one of these guys as soon as we move to a new property. Um, I actually have had one of these here for probably about, I don't know, it's been like five months now. Um, so it's already, it's already done and paid for. I'm going to probably take this lighter guy right here, but these are Mata Mata turtles. One of my absolute favorite turtles. And uh, I wasn't a huge turtle fan back in the day, and now I find myself more... <sighs> Everything is childproof, bro, and I don't have fingers and thumbs and stuff. You need fingers and thumbs for all these damn enclosures, bro. Uh, so anyway, um, I've always been a fan of these guys, even though I'm not a huge turtle guy, but I've always had these guys in my past. And you can see this guy's just a little bit lighter here, but they do vary in color. But these guys are the Mata Mata turtles. These guys are from South America. Here's a good, great specimen right here. And you can see they have all these little flanges and stuff that come out of the side of their face. And they have this big old mouth for gulping in their prey. But basically they live in the stagnant ponds of South America. So they're going to be in kind of a, a teen and water type of scenario. Standing ponds, things like that in South America. And these guys do get about three, I would say a good 
the, the carapace, which is this right here, from here to here, from top of the shell to the bottom of the shell, I would say the carapace would get probably about two and a half feet, maybe even larger for the bigger species. So this is just a little guy right here, but you can see that is one crazy looking turtle, one of my favorites. So we're gonna do an episode on setting these guys up in the very near future when we get to the new property there. But I'm gonna put this guy back. But again, these are all available here at Josh's shop. And we're gonna put the links in the description as always. So if you guys see anything that you like, I have had a lot of people from the channel actually come over and deal with Josh. And the best part about Josh is like I said, these guys take care of everything amazingly. So every cage you see, they literally deck out. I mean, look behind you. This is our little girl. I believe her name is Dorothy. So she's actually a sweet croc monitor, but you see the setups that they do. And this one's Josh's animal. So this one is not for sale, but he does have croc monitors available. So you can contact him for that. But like I said before in other episodes, if you haven't seen those episodes, do go back and check those out. But over here at Cold Blooded Kingdom, the entire staff is extremely knowledgeable when it comes to anything from turtles, amphibians, the chameleons, all the way across the board to the lizards and everything else that they have here. So they will help you. They will walk you through the entire process. They will make sure that you get animals that are rock solid because they're treating everything as it comes in so that they can make sure that anybody that gets a pet and or any animals for breeding, they're gonna get quality animals out of Cold-Blooded Kingdom. And that's my favorite part about Cold-Blooded Kingdom is because usually if you walk into a reptile shop, generally speaking, you're not gonna see this much money put into every single enclosure. It's just a lot that goes into it. This girl's actually being moved. This is the t Plus Asian Water Monitor. I'm not sure if this one's available for sale so don't check me on that one right under that you got the indicus that's a big mangrove monitor right there and i do believe i'm correct on the indicus part there so all these monitors are varanus uh, so it's going to be varanus indicus i'll show you one of my favorite monitors actually and these started coming in a couple of years back and when they started coming in um they were like the new craze and then i don't know why they slowed down so before these guys price tag was up at like 1500 to 1600 bucks and they call them the spiny neck monitor some people call them spiny monitors their varana spinulosis is the scientific name now they are extremely flighty and they do have extremely sharp nails but the part that i like about these chill out little bud chill out is that they are not real biters or anything like that it looks like they clip this guy's nails for sure because these guys have extremely sharp nails because they are tree dwelling animals but they don't get very large but if you could feel the skin on the back of this guy it's absolutely amazing so number one it does have that crocodile monitor look but if you look at the eyes dark black eyes beautiful skin on the back and then it's a very rough scaled monitor so the scales themselves feel differently than most other monitors and these guys don't get too too big they are tree dwelling monitors so i'm going to say about two three feet max for these guys but wonderful gorgeous little monitors here and you can see in that yellow just gets brighter as time goes on so that's the varana spinulosis available here at cold-blooded kingdom ladies and gentlemen but let's get into the episode and we'll get into, we'll do an episode fully on the spinulosis. I'll show you guys a couple more things before we get into what I want to talk about, which is our arboreal snakes. I'll show you these guys real quick. Some of my favorites. Now, Josh had, let's see if anybody flares up. No, you guys are all gonna be sweet, of course. Usually these guys are angry. So oftentimes these come in, and these are probably Papua New Guinea. Uh, these are from Australia, but Papua New Guinea sends these guys out. So these are New Guinea uh, frilled dragons. I almost lost my words there. So the frilled dragon, just like in Jurassic Park, as Brian just said, is the lizard. Usually if you flip them upside down, they'll start to do it. Obviously these guys are extremely chill, but these frills come out all the way, just like in Jurassic Park. A little dinosaur that flips his things out and spits the shit at the guy that's basically what this is right here so you can see the two little flaps in the back and it does become a full big circle in the back but these guys are new guinea if you have a chance to get the australian version of these guys i'd say buy it immediately josh should have some just recently that didn't last long in the shop i wish they were still here so i could show you guys what i was talking about as far as the difference between these guys and the actual Australians themselves, but these guys are absolutely gorgeous. So that's just another little trinket, a little gold nugget over here at Josh's shop for you guys to get into. So don't be afraid, ladies and gentlemen, to call over here at Cold-Blooded Kingdom 
Uh, you can find them online or at the links below our description as per usual. So anything that you guys want, dude, they pretty much can provide it. All right, so we got our general regular tree monitors. You guys have seen those. We'll run through this little area real quick. And we are going to stop right here at what we're going to be talking about today. So this is going to be our intermediate, and I say intermediate slash advanced because it's intermediate to take care of these animals here as far as just regular care for a pet. And then if you were to get into the breeding aspect of this, which we will later on because I'll be breeding some of these myself, uh, when you get into the breeding aspect of it and then also understanding the different localities and the different variations that we have here, then it becomes like an expert level thing. But in the right off rip, I would say definitely an intermediate animal to take care of. Why? Number one, not something that you would want to handle on a daily basis. So versus like, let's take a small walk over here for a second. Ball pythons, right? So you have a bunch of different kinds of ball pythons here. We have a blue-eyed Lucy. I don't know what this is. This is another blue-eyed Lucy. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is unless I was reading these here, but I'm not going to pretend to know by reading the signs. But these guys are absolutely great for beginner pets why you can handle them frequently they don't get stressed out often they'll constantly eat for you so it's great for kids it's a great learner reptile and then when you get to these guys over here man the shop's getting quiet Woo! i got one lap in the back and one whip all right so when you get to these guys here it's a little bit different if you handle them on a daily basis and continuously bother them they will stress easy and then they'll stop eating it's very difficult to get them to start eating once they've stopped but what you're seeing here minus this guy but this one this one this one this one and this one and i think that's gonna be it on the rack right here these are all the same species of snake now the difference is this these are babies so you have these guys are adults or sub adults because they do get bigger than this and then you have two different locales sitting right next to each other right so this is your biak this is the most common that you're going to see here uh not here in the shop but this is the most common green tree python that you're going to see once you move on you have all these different islands and all these different places that these things come from so you have cyclops mountain there's sarong there's Misul, there's Maruki, there's Jayapura, there's, uh, did I say Cyclops Mountain already? Uh, Brian doesn't even know. Uh, he doesn't know. If I did, I did. If I didn't, I didn't. So Cyclops Mountain, and it goes on and, on and on and <laughs> on. So there's a huge debate on what things are. And I had this problem because when I used to breed and sell, uh, I constantly got complaints from people saying, this isn't what you say it is, this isn't what you say it is, but we're ordering these things from a guy that has a farm in Indonesia. He knows exactly where the species was collected from. He has his own that were collected in the wild, and then he captively produces them in the other country in Indonesia, and then ships his captive born babies here. So that's a big difference when you guys are looking at your animals. If you see something that says CB, that means captive born. If you see CB, B, that means captive born and bred it's two different things so captive born means like if we get something in from an import and it lays eggs and then they're born that's a captive born specimen it was born here in the states if you see us cbb that means somebody got some animals and then did the work to breed those animals and then after they bred those animals they were able to get the cbb captive born and bred here in the states so for me it doesn't make a difference. A healthy animal is a healthy animal. I'll take a field collected, I'll take a wild caught, I'll take a CB, I'll take a CBB. It depends on what I'm looking for specifically. But the biggest argument that comes with these guys here is specific localities. Now this one will be the easiest one to tell. Whenever you have an Aru green tree python, you're always gonna have that white speckling. And I'm gonna bring out a couple of more so you guys can see what I'm talking about. This one's got light speckling. Some of the Aru's are blasted with those white flecks. When you have the Biox, you have this little common pattern right here and i'm going to show you a baby i'm pretty sure that red one over there's probably a baby biak we'll see here in a second um, and then when you move on and you get to different things like the sarong this and then here's a biak right here okay so we're going through the color change right here which i forget there's a specific word what's the word for the color change anybody want to call that one out for me yeah, transition is a good word for it, but what's the scientific I don't know the scientific terminology? Somebody give me a Hail Mary. 
We're gonna call it transition, just because Shane said transition. I like it, but it is a transition. Basically, what it is is the. <laughs> just Google it. So, you, you, are you googling? <laughs> All right, she's gonna Google it, so we'll have an answer for you in a second. But there's a specific. Metacrosis. Meta what? Crosis. Metacrosis. Metacrosis. Let me read that. M e t a c h r. Metacrosis. Metacrosis. Metacrosis sounds right. That actually does sound right. <laughs> It does sound right, but it sounds wrong at the same time. Uh, okay, so let's just, we're gonna go with Shane's transition. I like that one better. So the transition goes like this. When you have these things born, it's a green tree python. So this is what you're gonna get as an adult. The only time that you'll see a green tree python that's a different color is either A, selective breeding, B, you're gonna have these Kofu Island green tree pythons, which is the canary green tree python. And they say that because they can hold the yellow. So sometimes you get a baby Kofu Island that's yellow and when it grows up, it stays yellow. It doesn't go through the change and it keeps the yellow color. Those come in few and far between. I've had two come in in the last 20 years probably that I was able to keep and I no longer have those and I'm kicking myself in the butt because I figured more would come in and I have not seen them since. So that's an extremely rare uh, locale of those snakes. Now when they breed, those babies are gonna come out either red or yellow. And that's how it goes. So the baby green tree pythons are red or yellow. And that's what you're seeing here. You're just seeing, and this could be, like if we had a bunch of the same clutch, you'll have a bunch that are yellow and a bunch that are red. There's nothing, there's no telling how many you're gonna get of one or the other. But this is again, your most common. So here's a green, uh, the green tree python. Yes, green tree python, even though it's red. This is a red neonate. That's gonna turn into this type of animal when it's older. So this is the same locale as that over there. And when I say locale, that just means where it comes from on the map. So you have these variabilities all the way through these different islands and where they come from. And it's just small changes. And then there's the argument of if it's true of whatever's being sold, if it's actually sold as the correct thing. And yes, 100% it is. Why do we know that? Because the people that we get them from will literally go and they collect them from the place that they're supposed to collect them from. So they're literally labeling their adults, breeding those adults, and then sending us what they have. And when it's labeled as a sarong, so some may argue that this is not a sarong, but it's 100% a sarong. Why? I know the place that these come from. So this is a sarong, and then you have your aru. That's the easiest one to tell because they're always gonna have that white flex on it. Now, the reason why I say it's intermediate, please hold, I'm gonna grab one. All right, so in a nutshell, I brought you guys out a yellow neonate, and this is another Biak right here. So actually, this one is not a Biak. I wanna say that this one looks more with the saddles. Let me see if they got a label here. That they do not, but I would assume that this would be more of a Maruki pattern because your BX are always gonna have this bright yellow saddle. Like right on the dorsal scale right there, it's gonna be one big blotch and one big blotch on either side. So it continues that staggered pattern over and over and over again. So I would call this one probably, he's gonna have it in the background. I would have to see the paperwork, but I would say either a Jayapura, maybe a Maruki on this one, but definitely not looking like a BX to me, but I could be wrong. But uh, also, uh, Madison let me know that we were wrong in the metacrosis. That is not the correct terminology for it. So anybody that knows what the uh, change is, I think it's something genesis. Something genesis, it's not parthenogenic. It's not parthenogenesis. It's something genesis for the color change in these guys. So anybody that knows it, shoot it down in the comments. Let everybody else know, let everybody learn here. But now, yes, I am handling this snake. I'm not saying that you can't handle these guys. I am saying that if you overhandle these guys, they will stress out relatively easy. And then the requirements that you need, like this is a pretty good setup for these guys, 100%. So you can keep them in here for the better part of their life. Now remember, Josh is selling these guys, so these are just on display. But if Josh was gonna breed these, he would do the setup much differently. Number one, you're gonna have a lot more space. And we never pair them up and keep them together their whole life. So basically what we'll do is when it's time for breeding, and another time you'll see a color change on these guys is during breeding. When the females get hormonal, they get this hormonal blue color. So you could see, number one, that they're going through ovulation because their back end will blow up, but then you can also see the color change on some of those females because they'll go through that hormonal blue change. Now, the reason why I say it's an intermediate snake is because everybody's so tempted to constantly hold and play with their animals 
animals and stuff, which I get, trust me, I play with all my animals all the time. But this is more of an animal that you would set up and kind of enjoy from afar. Now you can get them used to it, so if you have a rock solid adult that you've had for a long time and you know that sucker's eating all the time, then you can pull him out every once in a while, just like this. He's not very aggressive, he's chill, he's doing his thing, he's just kind of hanging out. But again, for me, like if I went and took this guy home right now, I would put in this enclosure, I would set something up similar to what these guys have set up right here. And then number one, you're gonna wanna make sure your humidity's good, you wanna make sure your heat's good, and a lot of people miss the fact that this isn't a boreal species. So even though they come from Indonesia and there are hot spots in Indonesia, like uh, take, uh, take the water monitors for example so the water monitors that come from Indonesia those guys over there need a great deal of heat so you're gonna be heating those guys up to like 115 degrees for their hot spot these guys much different so a common problem that we see with these guys is people will get them and not do the research and when they don't do the research they'll put them in and you see that none of these guys have a heat lamp on because the temperature in the store is probably about 74 degrees to me that's perfect temperature right there and then you would cool them down when you want to do the breeding which again we'll do that in the future when we have these guys and do those episodes on the breeding of these guys but you don't see any heat lamps up top so we provide them with uvb we provide everything with uvb across the board because it always helps but you see heat lamps down here we don't see it up here because you don't want the temperatures that hot if these guys get into the 80s upper 80s 90s and they can't escape that heat the chances are that you will roll a little snake like this so although it doesn't require the heat lamp you still need to keep a proper amount of humidity which then becomes the hard part because you don't have the heat to bring in the humidity like you usually do so then you have to do different things little ticks there tricks and tips to be able to help you bump up that humidity without taking the heat too high and that's why i say that these guys would be like intermediate to advanced as well as their brethren which are right next to them here so you have these guys right here and this guy is about to take a fat dump so he looks a little stressed out he's a little black right there so that's not the normal color he's probably going to lighten up like the rest of his body this is not a green tree python this is not a green tree python this is not a green tree python nor is that one so those are all emerald tree boas so these guys coming from indonesia on the other side of the map let me put this guy back here real quick i'll let him hang out with us while we talk and finish this episode up here but these guys are all emerald tree boas so these are south america now we're getting into a different type of arboreal snake and even though they are on different spectrums as far as where they are geographically they do require similar setups so you can pretty much have an entire room full of arboreals and you keep that room at 74 76 would be like a top 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 that i would take that to i prefer like 72 in between 72 and 76 i feel is safe for me i try and hit that 74 mark across the board because just like these guys in south america we find a lot of species that need hot 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 but everybody thinks reptiles immediately you got to throw a bunch of heat on them which is not the case look at all your crested geckos anything pretty much arboreal that's spending its time in the trees is going to be away from the sunlight most of the day they'll come out to bask for a short amount of time but they're basically shoving themselves in between foliage and all that good stuff so even though it may be 98 degrees outside where you're gonna find these guys especially deep in the forest and some of these guys uh, some of these species go into the Amazon basin and it's gonna be a lot cooler there so you're gonna get into the temperatures where you're like 74 to 76 like I said within the dense forest that these guys come from same with the green tree pythons even though there's some areas and except for like Cyclops Mountain and stuff like that that's way up high so the elevation is way higher and all that good stuff but these guys as well the elevation may be way up high but they're never going to go to the top of the trees to seek all that sunlight for hours and hours and hours so you got to keep these guys a little bit cooler and the reason that i say that we're intermediate to advanced is because the advanced part comes in the breeding the breeding is very particular with these guys you got to cool them a certain way you got to treat them a certain way and you really really want to introduce them at just the right time and then these guys i would say are advanced because they're a little in the assholes and i'll show you that here in a second boom So I'm gonna come back here just because there's some people in the store now. So we're away from the uh, from the other animal tree bones. So you saw those small ones there. Now you got a big old giant beast of an animal here. So this is probably I would guess a female, and I could sex her, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. But I'm gonna guess female just because of the size of the head alone. Now the reason why I say that these are expert level is number one, 
these guys and she's probably gonna light me up. But what I'm gonna show you is that these dudes here, let me see if I can do this nicely. These dudes here, if she'll open that mouth, have the most gnarliest set of teeth that you could possibly ever imagine. Let me wrap her back in so that she doesn't have to swing and sway. Sorry, Mom, I'm just gonna do this for one second for you. So, the teeth on these guys, you can't even open the whole damn mouth, but you could see the size of those front teeth right there, look at that. And that's not even out of the sheath yet. So, these are razor, razor sharp. I'm gonna see if I can unsheath this thing. You know what, I have an idea. So, if you get lit up by one of these guys, you will pay for it because 100% they probably have one of the largest teeth out of the tree boas. I'm trying to get a whole mouth open here, but I don't want to bother her too much. So, see those bottom teeth right there? And then, if you see the top all together right there, see that's a pretty gnarly set of teeth that you got there. So, it can apply an extreme amount of damage i know that for a fact let me see if i can bail out of this here because she's got me wrapped up because i had her wrapped up are you gonna be sweet now i know i was messing with you i started it i started it and look you could see how the jaw separates right there just like just like the pythons there so they have their top jaws that are fixed and then the bottom jaws that are two split jaws so that they can crawl that food into their mouth but you could see how big they get and again it's not a species that you can actually you're gonna bite me in the bad thumb bro so it's not a species that you can actually handle all the time, which is why I say it's intermediate to expert because you have to have the self-control to not want to pick the damn thing up all the time. And this being a larger animal, and this one's gorgeous too because you have a patternless. Normally with the emeralds, you're going to have the big saddles on the back. And then with an Amazon basin, you have literally a stripe that goes all the way down, which is going to be your most sought after emerald tree bows, those Amazon basins, because of the way the stripe and the white goes all the way down, all the way to the tail. You're only going to find that in the Amazon basin locale. We don't have any of those there. When we do get some in, I'll let you guys know. We'll do a full episode on the Amazon basin. Pretty much anything that comes from the Amazon basin is actually way cooler than all of its little... Uh, brethren and all of its cousins from all over the rest of South America because these guys are pretty widespread but anything that comes from the Amazon basin for whatever reason looks 10 times better than it does anywhere else all right so we're going to end that there with a little species let's see if we get him to bite Brian bite Brian bite Brian so I'm going to go put this guy back and then before we leave the shop I'm actually going to have Shane walk us around to segue us into the next episode which is going to be back to beginner reptiles. We're going to be setting up Brian's crest of geckos in a bioactive setup so it's going to be cool. So before we leave the shop we're going to go to Shane. Let me go put this guy away. Bam. Here we go. Good? Yep. One, two, three. All right, so we don't have all the equipment that we need in the store right now. So we're coming back here in a couple of days and then Shane's gonna walk us through exactly what we need to get to do a bioactive setup for Brian's Crested Geckos at home. And then we're gonna do the beginner reptiles with the Crested Gecko. So we have that, but we do have one more surprise at Cold Blooded Kingdom before we leave. It is tradition that we feed something that is the mascot of the store. So we're gonna go do that right now. And we have one more surprise as well because Josh needs help with something. And we're gonna give him that help. So let's go feed a mascot and then give him a little bit of help and get the out of here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boom, visit him. Links in the description, left folks. Let's go. On, all right, as tradition, ladies and gentlemen, let's not break tradition. I've actually been excited to do this because we haven't been at Josh's shop for a bit here. Uh, this is one of my favorite that they have in the shop. I'm not gonna say my favorite species, although they are a bomb species. But this is one of my favorite animals in the shop because she is so sweet. Munchkin, where'd you go? funny too because Shane and them just cleaned out her water and then she messed it up. Sue Young, I got something for you. Come, 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 come,
Come on here, big girl. 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 You're supposed to hang out with me and eat, bro. Wait, can we do like one of those? Can we do the lady in the tramp? Lady in the trampet. Wait, lady in the trampet. I was gonna put the other side of my mouth. And then we were gonna kiss at the end. Well, that's what this was all about. So this is Sue Young, the Asian water monitor. Now, mind you, I did just feed her and I still have the smell of rat on my hand, but this animal is 100% extremely sweet. She's a very good girl. So even with the scent of rat on my hand, I'm not too, too worried that she's gonna be looking at more. She just was fed the other day too, but we're feeding mascots. So I gave her a little bit extra. So Uncle Justin is kind of like the bad uncle. Yeah, you smell it? You smell it? There's nothing left there though. See? Nothing left there, just a little bit of blood here. I'll give you this hand so that you know. Now you see her working that neck back and forth right there. There's nothing left. And she's basically pushing that rat down, down the gullet. But she is actually extremely sweet when it comes to Asian water monitors here. And this takes a lot of work, my dudes, like to get an animal like this to be this sweet. Oh, let me just give you a size reference here. So I'm six foot four. So that means this girl is probably whew, close to, I'd say five and a half. Probably a good five and a half feet, but she's a big, mean, mean girl too. And then you can see, not a lot of chunk on this thing. So with these guys, you want to slow grow them, which this girl has been slow grown. And uh, a lot of people like to basically feed a little bit too much food. So these guys, realistically, one this size, I probably feed her once every two weeks or once every week, depending on the size of the meal. Yeah, let me set you down since you're getting uncomfortable. Come here, big girl. So for me, I like to slow grow all of my animals because in the wild, they're not being provided the same amounts of food that we give in captivity. So a lot of people like to see big, chunky animals. And she is big and chunky, but she's got this little bit of skin right here, which means she's still got that lean, mean attitude. So this is how they would look in the wild. You're not gonna see a huge, plump lizard. Like she could still stand up, she could pick up her own body. Well, you can't eat that, you can't eat that. That's not for you. Let me put you back in before you get anything else. But this is too young. And this is why she's my favorite. She's actually super sweet. And now we're gonna go do a favor for Josh. And we're gonna end this little episode here. And the next favor we're gonna do is gonna be picking up another gorgeous monitor that is not sweet in any way, shape, or form. So let's do it. Boom. Man behind the camera now. Well, with not even another play man yet. behind the camera. You don't have to be play. You're taking pictures. He's already got it on play. <laughs> he can't even keep track. Of start it over. We're not starting over. That stays. Everything All right. stays in place, bro. Everything stays in place. One take only. All right. So the surprise is, is that claw here. It's kind of a dick. We gotta put him up on more for our kids. So we want to want to get a good picture, and we want to do this safely. So we have this side blocked off and behind us blocked off. And cause a bit of a dick, aren't you, man? Restraint possible to keep him comfortable. He's got some sharp ass nails. And I have to watch for the lunge back because he could shoot out and hit me right in the face. And if you get bit by a monitor this size, you're pretty. Well, can you lose some weight, bud? You're getting big and heavy. Don't you look at me like that, boy? Alright, let me see if I can get a side view. Good. Yep. See, 
Yeah, that's not so bad, bud. Come on the other side. There you go. I think we're good. Good? Yeah, we're good. All right, Carlos, go. All right, so Carlos freaked out a bit. So we got half of the footage there. But uh, Claude's actually not super bad. He's actually fairly tame. He didn't try and bite. He lunged at the nuts a bit. So I got a little bit worried about my berries, but look at these claws, bro. So this one was probably the worst because he dug it fairly deep into the palm there. So you got all this too. So that's why, if you guys remember the other episode, expert level reptile right there. Not only because of the large amount of space, but because you're kind of a dick. He's got really sharp nails. All right, boom, we're done. Let's go.